unity of command is from below to above you know irrespective of the number of employees to whom immediately you report is a matter there while of span of control tells you ideally a superior officer can control x number of employees there now i must also forewarn you that there is no worked out efficient benchmarked number of employees to be supervised by any foreman or any superior officer as such there it goes with practice there if you visit the directorate of education or if you visit national organizations there you will be seeing that you see they are divided into a b c d e f like that which are all are under one superior officer like the secretary university grants commission under whose administrative direction almost all units function within the university grants commission but down below every functionary is given a level of autonomy or delegation that delegation facilitates that next superior officer to discharge his functions for smooth and efficient functioning or disposal of issues and papers that is the reason why you won't get stuck you know in this there but over a period of time observers of systems of administration in india have been commenting that there is red tape and there is also delay in decision making or in disposal of papers you no know. for instance the rti for instance a number of issues relating to the right to education there as the new subjects are added to the old administrative controlled organizations there the confusion still persists there bringing into question frequently what is the unity of command here and frequently we will come across a situation that the volume of work increased phenomenally after a new agenda for development is added to each section particularly you will be coming across social sectors whereby organizations are marked by tradition or traditional organizations are asked to handle developmental functions there this is the conflict there and unable to address the issues of the conventional complaints against uh, bureaucracy in india you have also administrative reforms commissions which say that is say perhaps certain matters can jump the level and then get it processed by that you know as part of the decentralization there so you need to mention also note that principles of public administration are undergoing metamorphosis to adapt to the changing needs of society changing needs of the people and changing requirements of systems as such there i must also tell you here that parallel to government organizations you have a whole lot of the field called it you know information technology fields there where all the principles of public administration are put to test are tried out in a different way the unity of command principle somehow is interpreted to mean that is say efficiency should guide or the capacity of individuals to dispose of the work is determined by superior in such a way that say it is work or the goal of the completion of work that determines largely the disposal of the work there while unity of command is still relevant there what i am trying to tell you is that there is lot of difference between the principle of unity of command as we see in the public organizations and as we see in the it sector as such there uh, then we will come to another aspect of uh, unity of command many people also compare it with is unity of command is uh, same as chain of command 
The answer is that unity of command tells us very clearly how an employee is answerable to one superior. Whereas chain of command tells you the network of the organization as to who reports to whom. Generally people confuse between chain of command and unity of command. Chain more refers to structure. Unity of command refers more to the functional aspect of an organization as such there. Sometimes chain of command is also called scalar principle or scalar principle is what is generally refers to as a chain of command as such there. So if you go to any typical government organization you will be seeing a chart, organizational chart which explains say the director, the deputy director the, or uh, director, joint director, additional director, deputy director, assistant director, sim like that you know it describes you know more of a chain of a command there. Whereas unity of command tells how each one is uh, accountable to the one above. Now the actually the unity of command assumes that you see decision making is initiated after collecting inputs from different sources there and the decision process begins with the lowest functionary answerable to the next lowest you know, next highest rather then it moves on in the scale up above you know. that way it ensures that you say the, the, the decision is taken with the full concurrence of the chain involved in a typical organization as such there. Whether it is public sector or for that matter in a regulatory, regular government department as such. That is how the processes of work gets done. The head of the organization had all the powers to or functions to initiate the process and the termination is ensured with the disposal at the highest level there. You know. Different situations can be discussed in this context as such there. So unity of command ensures that you see there are no numerous voices you know, to whom one employee is held accountable there. There is only one superior above there which ensures you know simple efficient administration so to speak there are no multiple voices as such there are multiple heads to whom an employee is held accountable there well it develops if you look at the merits as such there it develops efficiency in an administration and is in conformity with the principles of organization especially the scalar the system as such there and as it avoids confusion among the employees there there is a kind of a clarity that uh, emerges and uh, work is uh, speeded up as such there and in every employee recognizes his immediate boss and to whom he or she gets commands you know or from whom he or she gets commands as such there. You know. Now you have also it helps to develop a clearer and better relationship among superiors and subordinates there. Though I must tell you in this context that to say this is also held in a typical organization with the help of fundamental rules of running an office there and I am now restricting it only to regulatory bodies as such. Regular regulatory administration which I referred to a few minutes ago as it consists of maintenance of law and order and you know if you compare it to typical government office as such there typical government like district collector there maintenance of law and order and collection of revenues traditional conventional administration as such there you know and it also results in clear and well organized authority you know uh, that uh, it is clear to employees you know 
and the workforce recognizes the superior authority you know then uh, it helps reduce and avoid duplication of work and uh, between various levels of workforce helps managers to take and quick decisions relating to their respective departments you know so apparently the unity of command ensures efficiency economy and effectiveness which are of course slogans in the new public management movement as such there but when it was visualized these three were unstated outcomes you know or unstated uh, objectives behind the uh, principle of unity of command as such there if you also compare it in that context there it also ensures effective and efficient discipline in an organization otherwise you know uh, as i told you few minutes ago the reverse of the span of control suppose you know uh, there are three sections divided in the lake you know section a b c there a cannot report to c because a under one boss only there cannot jump the hierarchy and possibly go or the immediate boss principle which the unity of command specifically states there perhaps you know that kind of division uh, very clear stipulation also ensures discipline as such there now what are the visit uh, unity of command free from all criticisms unfortunately no because over a period of time in the last 100 years of uh, 100 and, uh, more years you know 125 years of public administration there it also underwent lot many changes there i was also referring in the initial presentation that uh, the context changed the post war scenario or what you know uh, the context in which the uh, post colonial societies challenges you know of speeding up the developmental process there that brought in the compulsions to bring development through organized and systematic planning brought in whole lot of technical expertise or technical experts into the stream of administration there you have for instance scientists who are also called ex officio secretaries to government of india relating to space relating to science and technology relating to defense uh, relating to you know atomic research you know these are the people who are technical experts there uh, it is a uh, an interesting spectacle for us to observe how technical experts also work in the context of you know how they work in the context of unity of command principle there so this this is what you know there is one secretary to government of india perhaps the ex officio secretaries also deal with technical aspects as such there who may be dealing with highly specialized areas like space research you know uh, which uh, uh, you know call for lot of technical expertise there they are also under the broad rubric called unity of command and anybody may raise an issue here as to the strange coexistence of technical experts or specialists in the context of generalists there so the whole debate is about uh, the generalist parallelly existing with the specialist or experts there when there are number of you know other aspects there how they come under uh, these categories as such there sometimes the unity of command is impractical uh, perhaps you know you may have to not because the your bosses are absent for that day but sometimes the required efficiency is not forthcoming you know from the existing generalist as such there in those circumstances you know uh, how we explain the principle as such there you know. so the growing number of specialists in administration especially after globalization Uh, like for instance associating a chief idea officer is it possible in the government no it is possible in a private organization there so in a highly structured organization 
unity of command is relevant. In an organization with flexibility, perhaps the ideas matter than only the rules there, whereas the unity of command would it allow uh, the expertise, you know, or parallel authorities existing there, you know, like one employee for technical inputs to one boss and for general, for satisfying the unity of command principle, generally he is answerable to the regular boss. These are situations, maybe they are continuing, but this is uh, new situations, not new actually, started off in 70s itself or even before when we have adopted planning as a strategy there. It said unit of prince command is a general principle hold that holds good for large organizations to ensure discipline or disposal of the work, honoring timelines, ensuring efficiency. But if the context is changed, then we have to relook at the principle of the unity of command to understand it better. You need to see it in conjunction with the span of control which follows now. Thank you.